hello to all ladies and all colleagues, the, the men. There are not, not, not so many, but they are still coming into it, uh, joining our sessions. It's always a lot of women here. And I would like to tell you that this is the last session with Leonard. So then you have to be really, really focused today because he's going to introduce the fourth session of our special program, Create Your Comfort at Work, Coping with the Change, the Changing Environment, Using the phys Physicality, Your Physicality and Your Power, Emotions, and today it will be what? Our spirit. Our spirit. So this is very important aspect of energy and how to use our spirit to deal with the changing environment and in your life. So now I will just remind that we are recording all sessions and the all session will be on our website and I will send you once everything is done. So you will have the possibility to replay to exercise yourself because we have received a lot of small tips and lessons from Leonard. And even if sometimes he re he's repeating himself, it's, it's in order to help you to, to, to have the good reflex, to memorize it and to create the new good habits in your life. So now I will give the floor to Leonard. I wish you a happy session. Thank you. Thank you, Maria, and uh, thank you everyone for turning up on a Friday afternoon. Um, I know it's uh, perhaps at the end of the week, and uh, I know for myself, I've had a, a very challenging week with uh, meetings, phone calls, and no real time to focus and, and me time. Um, but it's be also been very rewarding at the same time as well. And uh, definitely having these sessions uh, on Monday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday have been rewarding for me to see you and to share with you some of the things that I know, some of the tips and tricks that I can that, that I can give from my um, knowledge as a as a trainer, my experience as a kinesiologist, and my long career, former career as a as a as a ballet dancer. I'm sorry. Yeah. So um, now, I'll, Marie, I'm going to hand over the controls to you. You're the co-host, and so you will be um, working out the technical things. So I'd like to welcome everyone back. Uh, for those of us who have been here previously on the on the last sessions, and those of us perhaps who have been perhaps here in June, and welcome to those people who are here for the first time. Today's session, as Maria said, it's the last of four sessions this time around. It's about accessing our spirit, accessing our spirit. It's always there. Sometimes we just sort of lose touch with it. We don't plug into it. It's about identifying our problems using a practical definition of problems. What is a problem? What is a problem? We'll be asking ourselves that question. We're going to be recreating our goals. We did that in June, I believe, as well. When we talked about, in this session, we talked about our motivation. We talked about the, um, the mechanics of motivation. And then we ended up with having a, a plan for setting goals. We're going to recreate that plan for setting goals. We're going to take it one step further by destroying our limited beliefs our limited beliefs around a certain objective that we want to um, that we want to achieve. I'm going to ask everyone again, as much as possible, be courageous, put your screens on so I can see some faces. I can I can connect with some people. I can see like uh, maybe some smiles. You know, if I can see that some people are, that need some energy, I can. Okay, everyone, stand up. Let's just do an exercise just to um, to get ourselves motivated again for this last uh, maybe. 45 minutes that we have left. Okay. There will be a QA afterwards. If you have any questions, if you have any, um, if you just want to listen, perhaps, um, if you want to comment, it's all, if you're free to, to hang online until um, 5 45. Okay. So we're talking about our spirit. Create your comfort at work, formally, create your comfort for yourself is all about your energy. It's all about rediscovering and how we tick, how we function, how our operating system, our brain, our mind, our mind functions. I like to take the analogy of our mind being a field, a fertile field 
where we have the opportunity to grow any seeds, any crops, any flowers we wish to. But if we don't, weeds grow. And so our mind is, is, is this capacity, this, um, I would say, this higher faculty that we have above animals, where we can imagine things greater than they are presently in front of us. We can see through what is there and imagine something better. For example, you would go and look for a, 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 build, a, you know, a house to buy or an apartment to buy, and it's an older building, and you can see it's run down, but you, using your imagination, you understand that it's an investment. You're trying to see what it would look like, you being there, living there perhaps, and, and you create that in your mind first, and then you go about making that happen. And it's the same thing with everything else, everything else that we do. So it's about rewiring and updating our system so that it engages ourselves and it supports us as well in our personal evolution, in our evolution in, at work with our careers, and of course, in our interactions with other people. Yesterday, we spoke about relationships, how to create supportive relationships. If I remember well, we talked about empathy. And I'm going to show you a video um, that I didn't get to show you um, yesterday um, that sort of rounds off that idea about empathy and about communication. We talked about how we communicate with people and the best ways of including the person in the conversation, setting our limits. And then we also discovered how to um, center ourselves. If we have an emotion that's overwhelming us, that's hijacking us, how we can use the ABC centering and or any other kind of centering technique like mindful, mindfulness or prayer for that matter to calm ourselves down and dissolve this emotion that's there. Remember, emotions are pieces of information from us and about us that we need to embrace, that we need to embrace. And, and it's a friend. It's telling us something. It's, we have to learn something. I had a, a huge emotion today, a disappointment um, that uh, I had to practice this. I had to really practice this and say, okay, this is, this, is, this is meant to happen. It's happened and I have to move through it. I have to make it positive for myself so that I can have the energy to go on, okay? Does this make sense? Give me a wave or something. Okay, great. Has anyone else experienced this in their lives where they've got, okay, great, Helen, thank you, <laughs> okay. So I'm not talking about, you know, just my individual uh, experience. You know, people as human beings, I guess we experience things where, wow, it's a setback. That's put me back. My energy goes down and I need to find ways, strategies, tricks, mental gymnastics where I can bring myself back, but also physical as well. Yeah. Physical things where I can see the trees or go for a walk, take some air, speak to a friend who's listening, who can listen, who can give us that space at that time. Yeah socially, emotionally, mentally, and physically too, okay? So at the base of this training is a simple model. You know it. Whatever we do, we practice and we cultivate over time. Whatever we do and we repeat, we practice it and we cultivate it, like walking, like breathing in a certain way, like drinking coffee, like going for a run, if that's our thing, or going to the gym, or writing out a report. Well, we've practiced it. We're perfecting this. Whatever we practice and cultivate over time, we get results. And these results are positive and negative. And the idea is, if the results are more negative than positive, we have to go back and look at what we are practicing, what we are cultivating, and tweak it, modify it, change it pivot it slightly so that we can get better results. Sometimes it's just a little thing that we need to change. Maybe it's not what we say, it's how we say it. Maybe we need more, we need more softness. Maybe we need more time for ourselves. Maybe we need to, to give ourselves permission to do things that we wouldn't normally do. Who knows? All these things are for us to discover when we go back and see what we're doing. Because that thing that we're doing is giving us those results, just like preparation. You need to prepare for something before you do it, for like, for example, a talk. If I don't prepare, then I'm ad-libbing and then I'm, oh my God, I don't feel so good about what, about what it is I'm trying to pass on to other people. 
Preparation is key. In, uh, in England, we have this phrase that uh, we're never prepared for failure. We simply fail to prepare. Huh? So, you know, I use those kinds of um, um, anecdotes because it helps me to understand the, the importance of preparation, for example. Whatever we do, we practice and we cultivate over time. So when we look at this and we're getting negative results, we can go back and think, well, let me change something. Let me modify. Let me change the algorithm of what I'm doing. It's as simple as a, perhaps a simple message, something very small, often, oftentimes. So underneath that is the awareness of our faith. Not religious faith, though it can be, not necessarily. Our faith and our belief. Write in the chat, what is our belief? What, what do you believe our belief is? Let me have a look. No problem, Carmen, no problem. Okay, no problem, Helen. What do you, the question is, what is belief for you personally? What is belief? If someone says, oh yeah, it's your belief. What are they talking about? Let's see what we have is what we define. How can we define belief? My values. Values are slightly different. Values are what I think is important. What I think is important, I value, obviously. Because it's important. I value my health. I value freedom. Huh? I value safety. Hmm, there's a dilemma there, freedom, safety. Um, what I think is true. What we think is true. It's also what we feel is certain. It's all subjective. It's all subjective. What I feel is certain, what I think is true. Because It's subjective because the word I, first person singular, is there what I think, what I think, you know, what I feel. It's also a belief is something that we repeat to ourselves over and over again. A belief is a thought that we repeat to ourselves over and over and over again, or we have repeated to us over and over again. You know, that's called the news, I guess, or, <laughs> or in the old days, propaganda. You know, it's, it's what's been, what we know. It's, it's sort of the availability bias, right? We know about that. Whatever's available, that's the truth, yeah? Just because we haven't heard about something else doesn't mean that it doesn't exist. It just means that we haven't been exposed to it, yeah? So let's get this really in, in our, our minds, what belief is. For me, anyway, it's a practical way of thinking about belief. It's what I think is true. It's what I feel is certain, and it's a an occurring thought, a repetitive thought that I tell myself or that is told to me. Yeah, that's what a belief is for this session. So it's an awareness of our faith, which is our, our belief systems, our belief in what we practice or what we refuse to practice. This training is based on our belief of what we practice and what we refuse to practice and when i say refuse it's not consciously refusing it's just that we don't get to do it we don't we don't value it enough to do it yeah so um the awareness also there's an awareness there's an awareness that we are authors of our own narrative we are authors of our own story what happens to us happens to us because somehow we've made choices in the past I think there was this saying by Les Brown. I forgot what it was. I try and remember it. Something like, welcome to your decisions five years ago. <laughs> you would say something like that, which is like really interesting because it's like we make decisions uh, in the past that lead us to the present moment, that lead us to where we are now. If we had, if we had changed our decision, if we, had, if we had made different decisions. And when I did say decision, it's not a desire. It's not a desire. It's a desire backed by action. That's a decision, a desire backed by action. Um, so it's about creating, understanding that there's an awareness that we are authors of our own story and that life is not happening to us. Life is happening for us. So I had to really affirm, auto-suggest this affirmation today when I, when I received my um, um, bad news. Um, that life is happening for me. So I'm looking for, I'm looking for not only reasons why it would happen, but I'm looking forward as well. I'm looking into the future. I'm looking, what is this permitting me to do? 
what opportunity, what windows and doors are opening now for me hearing this piece of news? Yeah. When I was practicing kinesiology, uh, I still do, but of course, because of the lockdown, much less than I did before. Um, I would describe the phenomena of our belief system like this. Someone would call you and they would tell you some news. And that news you would interpret as negative. And so you would perhaps feel weak. You would feel discouraged. You wouldn't have the motivation and energy to continue what you were doing prior to the phone call. And in, verse, in, the, in, the, in the reverse um, scenario is that it was positive. Well, you have lots of energy. You feel enthusiastic. You feel that, wow, the world is opening. You feel it's all happening inside of you. It's all subjective. It's all what we conjure, like Harry Potter. We conjure these things in our minds, and it gives us energy or takes away our own energy. Yeah. Am, I, am I making sense? Give me a, a sign. Okay, good. Okay, super. So I'll go on. <laughs> So, go on. so today we're going to practice one or two ways, one or two ways, looking at the time, of supporting and encouraging our spirit. Yeah. That that subtle, whatever it is in front in, in, in us that makes us like blossom and bloom, makes us smile, makes us feel good about ourselves and about life. Yeah. Um today, um, the um we're gonna take one, you know in June, rather, we were talking about the mechanics, we we're talking about how motivation, all these facets of motivation, and we set out a little plan for a goal. If you were there, it is like a five step plan, we're going to take it a step further. And we're going to destroy our self critical, our self criticizing self, our troll voice, our negativity in ourselves. And we're going to do it in a very simple way. And you it works as long as you practice it. Yeah, you know? then it becomes automatic. Okay, so, um, and it's done, it's no rocket science, it's by auto-suggestion, yeah. I have a question for you though. Who here is a perfectionist? By show of hands, who here is a perfectionist? Most of the people I think working in the institutions are perfectionists. And uh, for me personally, um, I am my worst critic. I am, I, I could really beat myself, literally beat myself up, you know, you know psychologically when when things don't go according to the way i want it to go of course and uh if, I, if i'm to blame of course i'm going to beat myself up if someone else is to blame i'm going to beat them up too i'm going to really you know uh which is unfortunate <laughs> because I'm, I'm i'm there's something there's there's another aspect of myself that i'm not embracing and we're going to look at that now okay so um is there anything else i'd like to add before i go on Okay, um, yeah, let's just go on. I would like you to first, let's go through the goal setting plan, okay? Because last June, and maybe it was rushed through at the end of it, but let's, let's think about that now. So first of all, we have to define a problem. Write in the chat what you think a problem is, for example. What is a problem for you? Define a problem. You, know, you can define it. Things to solve, okay. A challenge or an opportunity, a challenging situation, something difficult to solve, something that I cannot seem to find a solution to, okay. What else is a problem for you? In a practical way, what is a problem? How do you know it's a problem? Something not going well, okay. Don't use the term problem. It's a challenge. Okay. If you want to call it a problem, you don't want to solve it. Interesting philosophy. Okay. Fair enough. An obstacle. Yeah. Okay. A challenge. A challenge makes it e easier to move. A problem may be sort of like something that you, you know, that, that's the problem. Let me go the, in the other direction. You're not facing the problem. I can understand that. Something preventing me from achieving my goal. Something that must be addressed. Something that that comes to often to my mind, <laughs> something that challenges, challenges, your, challenges your status quo or your expectations. Absolutely. All of those things are right. I define a problem as something that I have that I don't want. Something that I have that I don't want or something that I want that I don't have. <laughs> it's a problem for me. It's a problem. 
And there are small problems, which I give less value to, or the ones I give big value to, even if they're small, I give them lots of value. Today, for example, I gave it huge amounts of value. That's a problem for me too. You know, It's something that I wanted that I couldn't get. Where's your problem? If we define problems like this, write in the chat if you want to, you know, or a smaller problem if you choose that. What's your problem? What's your problem? And I'm defining it specifically as a problem. Something that I want, that I don't have, something that I have that I don't want. Write down, write down in the chat your problem. That's how we start our goals. Hurdle, some, hurdle something that works me up emotionally. Absolutely. It's all of those things that you've mentioned. Just write it in the chat. Share it a little bit. I'll tell you my problem. My problem was um, I was writing a proposal, uh, seven pages. I started in the morning and then the contractor came back uh, just before I sent it, 20 minutes before I sent it with an email set up. Oh, client wants chosen someone else i was like oh God. so that was like oh very very challenging for me very very challenging okay i'm looking at the chat that was my problem something that i wanted that i couldn't get i'm not tall enough for my current weight thanks lockdown <laughs> yeah okay thanks to the lockdown i've been able to gain wonderful curves on my body me too any other problems? Any other problems that we want to share? Yeah, I'm letting Andrea in the room. Any other problems? Okay, well, look, write your problems down. I suggest that you write your problems down on a piece of paper. One problem. So we just tackle one at a time. It may be a huge one. It may be a small one. You decide. You decide. Write it down. Second step. Formulate it positively, meaning... For example, it's like, uh, ah, my problem is my colleague always complains. Okay. Well, how would you formulate that positively? Something like, I want nourishing relationships at work, for example. Or like me, um, I'm five kilos heavier. Okay. How would I formulate it positively? I want to feel athletic. I want to feel good in my body. And I want to feel that I have lots of energy. For example, just an example. So you have your problem. It's the first step. Second, formulate it positively. We're trying to use a flip way. We're not trying to use negative words such as not or uh, less. Yeah. We're trying to use positive words, formulate it in a positive light. It's called, um, we have spin doctors that do this, huh? They say, um, you know, politicians misspoke. I don't know. They're trying to, you know, they basically, they said something they shouldn't say, shouldn't have said. Okay, I won't go there. Write down in the chat, um, or rather write down next to your, your difficulty, your problem, your challenge. Formulate it in the positive. Work results are not what was expected. Are not what was expected. Not so, um, how would you... How would you formulate that? I want work. I want, I want to feel, I want to be, I want to achieve. I want to achieve results that are satisfactory, that are or high results at my work. Use the first person singular. Make it yours. Yeah. Are we having trouble here? If you raise your hand if you're having trouble. Um, is it difficult? We can work it out. Okay. Okay. Andrea, first. How, Andrea? Maybe you want to un unmic yourself so I can we can we can hear. Maybe you, you raised your hand by mistake or. Uh, no, actually. Um... I believe that there are issues that, uh, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. I believe that uh, there are some issues that, um, um, unfortunately, um, they are very difficult to cope with and to find um, a positive perspective. Even if you really want to, 
if, uh, and, but there are moments in your life and some sort of issues that you don't fully control. Okay. Well, at, you control. You control at a certain level, but you prefer to be in the problem than the option that is sometimes the unknown. So in these sort of issues, I, I have some, uh, yeah, I, I find it very difficult, a, a real challenge to uh, uh, even to be okay with myself. Okay. Sorry. No, that's okay. It's, it's good. Thank you for sharing and thank you for being honest there. What can I suggest? Well, then I would formulate something like, I want more. I want to... Um, I want to expand my awareness. I want to believe that there are ways to overcome this problem. I want to believe that, are, that there are ways to overcome this problem. That could be an affirmation for you. That's how you create a goal. Goals permit us to move forward in a certain direction. Goals are there so that we learn through the process of achieving our goal, what it takes and who we need to be. To, uh, um, to, be, to be in that situation where we don't have the same sorts of problems. Mm -hmm. Stefania also put a hand up. Thank you, Andrea. Stefania? Yes, hello. Uh, first of all, sorry. I also have problems of connections. Otherwise, I would activate my video. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. Okay. Um, no, well, in part, it was similar to what uh, Andrea said in the yeah. sense that... Um, if I think about a problem that is very, very personal, like mm. the fact of, for example, sorry, maybe I'm too honest, but uh, the problem is I would like to have a baby and I can't. Mm. In this case, it's really hard to, <laughs> to try to focus on uh, the positive aspects, but I'm sure there is a way. It's only that it's not easy. Okay. One way of doing it is actually focusing on what would having a baby give you what relationship would you start who would you be and how would you behave having a child of your own yeah and those qualities you bring to you those qualities you you create in the present moment what you're yearning for perhaps biologically which is absolutely normal is this experience and this experience can this experience be reproduced in different ways i would argue yes maybe i'm wrong i would argue that there are different ways to experience life experiences uh, not just one way even though that may seem that that's what it's like. I know many, many I know a few um, ladies who have wanted children, who've had a long, many years of, of difficulty, of challenge, and who have succeeded in some shape or form to fulfill themselves. Yeah? Because they're not taking just that, that one aspect of it. They're thinking about what's the bedroom going to look like? How would I behave? What would I do? Who's the woman or the, or the mother that I would be? And how would I relate to people in different ways? They're taking different aspects of that, facets of that, that, that result, that goal, and putting those into, into manifesting those in their lives now. That's what I could suggest. I'm reading here. Thank you, Stefania, for that. Thanks. Um, Thanks to you. Thank yeah. you. I'm reading uh, Mat Matia um, saying it's a bit counterintuitive for a human brain. Uh, it's a higher faculty of the human brain. We think as fight or flight all the time. Not true. Not true. Fight or flight is the program that we're, it's our basic program. It's the, you know, the Windows, I don't know, someone corrected me the other day. Windows 98, not 97, doesn't exist. I mean, Windows 98. Yeah, but we have higher faculties. We have imagination. We have, we have, um, we have decision making. We have the capacity to see beyond what, what is in front of us. That's why we, we can fly. That's why we can, you know, do all kinds of things. We have uh, this medium for communicating. All these people in different areas of, 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 of Europe communicating with each other. We've gone beyond what the Obonobo 
uh, you know, monkey has done. And they only have like 1% difference in brain structure. We have the prefrontal cortex. Yeah. So we are animals. Yes, indeed. We're glorified apes. And at the same time, we have this higher faculty that none of our other species share. Otherwise, they'll be doing it. Yeah. So, so we can, we can, we go thinking way higher. And they say, you know, I mean, the recent science, well, I don't know if it's the recent science, but science that I heard early on was that we only use like, you know, 2% of our brain capacity. You know, so, so there's a lot more to discover. It really is. So there's no harder work I've heard that said by someone, I think it's Earl Nightingale. There's, <clears throat> excuse me. There's no harder work than working on your mind and the power of focus. Whether you want it, whatever you want to see, you'll see it. We said this yesterday, I think. You know, when you're looking for something and you're emotionally involved in it, that's all you see. That's all you see. And that's what all you're talking about as well. You're obsessed with that. And so that can be also a positive obsession. A positive obsession to contribute, to grow, to learn more, to find out more, to share your experience and help other people. I love to start accepting things I cannot change. I always get stuck in the phase um, between why does it have to be like that? Mm, that's not a good question. That's not a good question. Because life, the universe, it's going to give you, well, it has to be like that because, 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 and it will show you everything. You ask your brain, why does it have to be like that? Well, you're going to get reasons to the answer why. Why do I have to be where I am now? <laughs> well, all the reasons are going to turn up for me. Instead of, what do I need to do to make significant changes that can empower me, make me feel better, and get me to where I want to go, which is not right in this present moment? Yeah. It's a better question. So quality questions count. Quality questions. If you find yourself asking that question, tell yourself, erase. The question that I want to ask is, what do I need? How do I get further? What do I need to achieve? What do I need to learn? If there's something that I need to understand, what is it? And that will start you moving in a certain direction. And it will get you out of this stagnant, um, or what I would call stagnant, because I find myself in these situations as well, less so now than before. Situations where you, you feel powerless, hopeless, helpless and hopeless. But it's the questions that you ask yourself that empower you or take the power away. And it's insidious. It's like pulling the rug under your feet without you even knowing. And we do it to ourselves. Yeah. Okay, so it's define a problem, turn it into a positive affirmation. Yeah. Defi formulate it in the first person and for formulate it now. I am, I have nourishing relationships at work. I feel much better in my body. Define it as something positive. Question yourself, is it something within your control? Is it within your control? Can you act upon it at 100%? If it's not, you can still go along with it, but you'd be more likely to give up. Is it something within your full range of resources and resourcefulness? Is it something that you can you can achieve? Is it achievable? Yeah. Is it within your control? I want to fly without, without, without any uh, airplane. I want to fly. Like, I want to jump off the building and fly. Okay. I guess that is within my control, but is it, is it, is it feasible? Is it, is it realistic? Is it something that I'm, I'm working towards? Is it something that I can do? Yeah. Is it within your control? The third one or the fourth one rather, <coughs> excuse me, is, is it, give it a, um, is it sensory specific? Can you feel it? Can you see it in your mind's eye? Can you see it happening? What, how are you dressed? How are you breathing? How are you interacting with people? What do you say? What do people say to you? What do other people say to others about you when you've arrived at your goal? This is interesting because this starts, this begins, um, the, uh, the mind starts searching, starts brainstorming, at least my one does. My mind starts brainstorming and saying, well, yeah, they'll probably say this, they'll say that. The, some people will say this to me and I'll be, I'll be behaving differently towards them too. Yeah. 
This helps you um, create a self-image of yourself, which is perhaps a little bit higher, a little bit better, a little bit further down the road than you are now. Yeah. Make it sensory specific, the five senses. Yeah. The next one would be um, location, location and time. At what time would you achieve this goal? Set a time. For me, this one is difficult because when we set a time, when I set a time, I'm gonna say, I say to myself, oh, is it really do it? Can I really do it? Doesn't care. No, don't worry about this. Don't, don't care about this. Set a time in, in, you know, want the action of saying it's gonna happen at this time works in your favor, works in your favor. You may be late for the bus. You may get there later, but you set a schedule and a plan. It's like saying, okay, what's the plan today? What are we gonna do at, uh, at 10 o'clock? Do we have a meeting? Do we, what are we doing? We plan it. We may not make it on time, but we're going to make it. We have something in our minds and we're focused in that direction. Set a time and set a place where you achieve the goal. I'm going to recap. Define what your problem is. Yeah. Pro something that I have, something that I don't want, something that I want that I don't have. Reframe it in the positive. Yeah. Po formulate it in positive in the first person as if it's happening now. Is it within your control? Is it something that's within your control? Ask yourself that question. If it's not, then go back to the, to the previous question and try and formulate it differently. If it is, good, move down. Is it sensory specific? Can you feel it happening? Can you imagine it happening in your mind's eye? Can you imagine how, for example, I like looking at myself or imagining myself how I'm dressed and how I respond to people? and what people will be talking to me about and how I'll be able to help them, for example, and how there would be sort of, uh, you know, there'll be this, this energy of, uh, of uh, communication and uh, sharing. Okay. Then the next question is environment, where and how, or sorry, where and what time, what time in the future and write the time down, even, even specifically, your brain needs a direction and a destination. It's like, you know, you get into an airplane, the question would be, do you think that the pilots know where they're going? Of course they do. They have a destination and they have a time. Whether they get there or not, of course, we hope they do, is a different story. But they have it in their minds and they have it in their focus, in their mind's eye, and they're going in that direction. So set a time and set a location. Very important. And then, of course, afterwards is another step. Yes. Is it ecologically responsible? Does it do you harm? Does it harm anyone in your entourage? Does it harm anyone? If it harms someone, if it's detrimental in a, in a, in a, in a, in a major way, I would say try and reformulate what it is that you want. Go back to that second step, reformulate what it is that you, you truly want in the, with positive intentions. Yeah in a positive way, first person singular, then go down the steps, my control, sensory specific, environment, and then go back to um, ecologically um, responsible. Yeah. And then the last one, or one, yeah, the last one I would say is, who is that person? Who is that person? Who is that, that Leonard that is achieving that goal? Imagine that person. Use your imagination now. Conjure this up. What environment will you be in? What will you be, you know, sitting on? How will you be breathing? Who would you be speaking to that you haven't been speaking to before? Perhaps new people from whatever in the hierarchy that you're being able to have conversations with. What conversations will you be having? How would you be able to help people? Really imagine this. This is very important. This is vital, actually. You can skip all the other steps um, and just use this imagination. Project yourself. We do it automatically anyway. We project the worst. We project the next scandal, the next uh, anxiety, the next, you know, social, you know, attack, social fear. We protect the next uh, problem that's coming around the corner. We, we have faith in that negative thing that's going to happen so why not the positive why not why not project something positive oh it's very difficult yeah it's difficult 
as I mentioned before, we're hardwired to detect danger. Even the suggestion and the 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 yeah the suggestion of danger. We oh yeah really, and we're focused there. Instead of focusing on what we truly want, what we truly desire, that is beyond the here and now. Yeah, it's in the future. I'm looking at the chat. Um, why is projection so important? Very good question. Why is it so important? Well, it's a faculty that we use anyway. We project things. Oh, I know what they're going to say. Oh, I know what's going to happen. Yeah, I knew it. Huh? We were, um, but we, well, from my sort of background and culture, we project what's negative. We pro pro project the danger, the fear. We do this anyway. We're practicing this. So my question is, why can't we practice what is, why can't we project, meaning what we do anyway, project something positive for ourselves? What's stopping us? Habit. Our habit thoughts. And these are the weeds, weeds in the, in the garden, in this, in this fertile ground, in this field, in this continent, which is called the mind. These are the weeds that, that grow. And we have to tend the soil. We have to con constantly remind ourselves, affirm to ourselves the positive because we don't have the habit. We're not hardwired to see positive only or any positive. We're hardwired to see negative, to run away from pain and move towards pleasure. Yeah. Is this making sense? Is this, uh, give me a thumbs up or, you know, whatever. It's okay. Is it something that you can, you can grasp? Yeah. Okay, good. Then I'll go on. So we're here at the bottom. We've done, is it responsible, is it responsible ecologically for me and my surroundings, the people in my surroundings? It will change. Your surroundings will change with new goals, especially big ones. You may have a whole new set of friends. I'll tell you a little story. Years ago, I think it was in the 1990s, I was, uh, I was practicing macrobiotics. And so I was eating brown rice and, uh, you know, miso and things like that. And um, I was doing these courses in London. There was a big movement there at that time. And I went to the States, et cetera, to, to you know, listen to these speakers and, um, this, you know, people that were continuing the sort of like uh, the discipline. And there was this idea of uh, eating, chewing 80 times every mouthful of food before swallowing. So that the saliva can really break down the ju you know the juices and stuff, and so the stomach could prepare itself so that the food will go down. You would need less to eat. It was all these benefits that were that were associated with this chewing, and that you know when you chew, you take more time. You give yourself that time. You're not rushing around, you know, with uh, from from th you know from one thing to the other. And so I started doing this, um, and I stopped pretty abruptly after about two weeks. And I stopped because I was changing. I was changing and, and my environment was changing as well. Uh, the friends that I had was, Lena, what's going on? You know, why are you doing this? Isn't it crazy? Society was moving against me. You know, that's what I was saying to myself. No, but I was practicing something that was, that was bringing me to another place. And so my, my entourage, the people around me, the environment, I looked at it differently. I was clear as a whistle as far as my mental capacity to concentrate and to focus. I was like on the ball. I would never forget anything. But my environment, which I was attached to, was changing too. And that's what made me decide, well, I can't do this because I'm too afraid of losing that. So ecologically responsible speaks about that. You know, what will, what will I have to sacrifice? I have been sacrifi sacrificing things anyway to get where I am. But how would I need to change and how would my environment need to be modified so I can go to the next level? Yeah. And then, of course, that last one, who, who am I? Who am, how do I behave? How do I feel? Who do I speak to? Imagining yourself as that person. Okay. So we take all of this. We find our goal. We've arrived at the end. And then we write our goal on the top of the piece of paper. So I invite you to do this now. To write your goal, take an A4. Write it on the top. It's positively formulated. You've gone through all this criteria. Yeah. And you can imagine yourself there having the goal, speaking to these people, 
interacting with, you know, doing the work that you want to do, yeah. doing the activities and, and fulfilling your, your mission, your purpose, or your, or your, or your dream, you know, of, of the way you want to give and receive information yeah. before your time's up, yeah? That, that, that lifespan that you have. Okay, now draw a line down the middle of the paper. Paper is positioned vertically, draw a line in the middle. And on one side, the goal's on top, on one side, on the, on the left-hand side, you are gonna be your worst critic, your worst critic. And you're gonna write down why you can't do it. Anything that comes into your mind, you write it down and immediately on the same line next to it, on the other side of the page, you write, Something like, um, let's see, something like, I respect myself. I accept myself. I fulfill my desires. And it is good. Something like that. I, you know, I, I, I personally write, I love myself. I respect myself and I accept myself totally and profoundly. And then you go to the next line. Something that jumps in the eye, well, Leonard, you know, you're, you're too old. Leonard, you're too old. It's along the same line, and, and, don't forget the and, and I love myself. I respect myself. I believe in what I can do. You know, I believe in my qualities. As you go along each line, you can change it, modify it, so it really resonates with you. The words resonate with you. I can do this. I believe in myself. I have the capacities. I can get, I have the resources or the resourcefulness. Yeah. Then the next line. You don't have the time. You know, it's going at time. I never have the time. Okay. And I respect myself accept myself i can find the resources i believe in i, I believe in achieving this goal yeah. next line right to the extinction go all the way down the page Brrr. always with something it's something else that's negative even if it comes back perhaps like nine, line number five is the same as line line number 25 let it come back address it again what we are doing we are allowing ourselves, our belief system, to come in here like bodyguards, like uh, you know, bouncers in a in a in a in a, in a, in a nightclub. And so you can't go in for these reasons. Duh, 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 duh. And you go back and you administer this this affirmation of yours, which has been refined as you go down the list of how you have this appreciation of yourself and of your capacities and your resources and your resourcefulness. And how you can achieve this goal. Yeah. Always link it with the and. You don't want to put a but there. You want to say the negative and the positive. And of course, the psyche, the body, your subconscious mind will always choose the positive. Yeah. So you yourself, like me, myself, I'm my worst critic. I am my worst critic. And the best way I can destroy this critic for the present moment regarding a, a specific goal is to, is to, you know, I'm writing it down and I write something immediately afterwards and, and the affirmation can remain the same or it can be tweaked as you go along. Yeah. I'm going to give you 30, 30 seconds of silence just to let that simmer, maybe continue writing. And then we can finalize it with a, a little affirmation. Affirmations are very powerful. We affirm things all the time, how it's not going to work, how it's no use. We're affirming this to ourselves. We're speaking to ourselves as well as to others. Oh, I'm not really good at that. I'll never have the opportunity. I'm just unlucky. And this is a way of opening up the box and saying, reprogramming, literally reprogramming. 
the um, algorithm, reprogramming the, the, the code. Oh yeah, this, okay, now this. Again, okay, same thing. And go with the flow. If you repeat the same negative affirmation, negative um, reasons, belief system, you can, you can repeat it several times until you, until it dies, until that, that, until something else comes into your mind. Another reason why you can't do it. All the, all the reasons why I can't do it. And then the affirmation, the positive affirmation that um, is, uh, for me, I like using the word love because I think it's, um, it's, it's a very powerful word that opens windows and doors to different things the things that we perhaps we don't think about when we're using our logical, rational minds. Creativity, generosity, kindness, respect, acceptance, gener you know, or I mean, these, these words for me, high, they, 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 they give me energy just speaking them. Yeah. What other words can you find? Use them, use them. I'm looking at the chat. Let's see. How long does it take to develop a new habit for you? I keep falling back. As long as it takes. I'm committed. I've been a dancer for 20 years, so I've been, it's been beaten into me. Yeah? Not beaten into me, but it's been like every day I've been doing the same, you know, same old tendu, back mon grand back more. You know, all these, 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 these basic steps over and over and over again different teachers criticizing excuse me and those ones inspiring you as well yeah i believe that you can do this you know it's just stretching it's just like stretching your skin it's opening your back it's like you have wings it's like you know they they conjure these images in your mind that make you feel oh yeah that's what it is and you begin to dance because you've had this imagination it's being triggered and so this is how we can do it sort of in a structure now for um, now that we are non-dancers, uh, we can dance again by using the imagination in every single way possible. We can be childlike. We can have no, no, um, no, um, no, in, no inhibitions. Get a, these inhibitions we're writing on the right side, sorry, on the left side. And on the right side, we're writing those qualities, those, those, those um, empowering beliefs. Yeah. I'm continuing with the, um, uh, yes, thank you. How does it a new habit? Okay, falling back. What if the reality is always pr proving you wrong? The reality, whose reality? Your reality. Well, work on that. I mean, it's easy to say, huh? Now, don't look for proof outside of yourself look for it inside how do you feel is the question how do you feel and do you believe that you have the um the determination the persistence the faith to continue or will you do you want to settle where how in what way you had the, the, the gumption and the, and the courage and the, and the motivation to go through all these hurdles to get to where you are. What, what, why would you not want to go on? Interesting questions. Give yourself all the reasons why you shouldn't do it. You shouldn't go on. You shouldn't have more motivation. You shouldn't desire more and then knock them dead with a, a, a wonderful affirmation. And you can, as I said, modify this affirmation to, so it can be very powerful for you at this time. I'm reading on. What if you keep saying these truths to yourself, however, otherwise others shut it, however others shout it otherwise. There are, are certain things you can share with, um, with everyone. There are other things that you can only share with a few people. Very good question, actually. You should, well, I would say develop a support system, people that you can contact, speak to, that are there to help you, that are there to help you grow, 
who know what your value, who respect you, who want something good for you, speak to those people. If we were surrounded by those people, we'll be like doing all kinds of crazy things and being successful. But life is, is made that we, we are surrounded by systems, people, society that takes away our power, that takes away our responsibility and our, our, our sense of autonomy. We give that over to others. We give that over to structures because we want to feel safe. That's normal. We should. At what point, though? That's another question. Maybe the destination is not the important thing. Uh, did you not get it, but you learned it in your on your road? Um, well, look, I would say the destination is the, the goal is the, is the means by us traveling down the path. If we don't have a goal, we won't travel. If we don't have a, a motivation to get somewhere else, we're not going to make all that effort all those ups and downs to learn something else. We're going to stay where we are. And then you never stay where you are. You either go forward, you go backwards. You either get more ambitious or you get less ambitious and you become more safe and, you, and we like our creature comforts. And then all of a sudden, everything outside of your door is dangerous. So the idea is to continue keeping that fire burning inside. Know your saboteur, yeah. Know those, those moments where you're hijacked, where you hijack yourself with thoughts. Yeah. There's a lot to say about this. There's a lot to explain and to unpack, and we don't have the time. I'm seeing we're over time already. I just want to add one last thing for this affirmation. You defined a problem. You formulated it positively, positively in the first person. You found out, that, found out that it was within your control. It's sensory specific. You can feel it, see it, and you can, and you can, you know that that sensation, those five senses that we have, you can feel it like that. You've gone on to know the place and time when it's going to happen. You've analyzed if it's ecologically responsible. It will change your environment. It will change you because you have to have a different identity to arrive there. Otherwise, you'll be there already. But does it do that in a dramatic way? And it's okay. You tick that box. Fine. And then you've discovered who that person is, who that's, who's the person that you need to be to get there to the destination. And you have that in your mind's eye. Good. You repeat that. And then the, the last thing was um, write this affirmation on top of the paper, divide the line, and it's, to, and it's basically to cut the head off the dragon. Write down all the reasons, the reason why you can't, positive affirmation, reason why you can't, even if it repeats until you go all the way down the page, you might even need two or three pages if you're committed like that. If you have lots of things to say that are limitative for you, that limit you. And you, you, you cancel it with an empowering belief using the and in the middle, and. So you allow your subconscious mind and your psyche to choose the positive. And then at the end of this, you write, I'm so happy and grateful now that I have, and you write your achievement. I'm so happy and grateful now that I have, for example, you can define your own affirmation. I'm so happy and grateful now that I have this wonderful relationship with my colleagues. That I have, that I feel incarnated in my body and I'm pleased with my figure that I am respecting myself with the intake of my food or that I have achieved um, a better relationship a greater relationship a more genuine relationship with those who are close to me I'm so happy and grateful now and then that's your affirmation with the affirmation you repeat it whatever we repeat we practice and cultivate, and then the results happen at the end. We start practicing and cultivating that. And what we're doing, we're speaking to our subconscious mind. We're speaking to this, this, um, this system of ours that's running our life, basically. That, that, that defines our behavior, our actions, our feelings, 
that's based on what we were exposed to in the past. And we're reprogramming, we're, we're we affirming again and again and again what we truly want. And this is energizing your spirit. We're talking about spirit here. We're talking about not our logical minds per se. We're doing it in a logical way. But we're talking about how to inspire ourselves, how to feel that we're here for a reason, how to, find, how to bring ourselves in the direction that perhaps no one you know has gone in. Yeah. How to think differently, as Steve Jobs would say. How to behave in, 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 you know, magnanimously or, or in a way where you find that you're, you're really at your highest self, your, your best self. It's like to dress very well, put on your best clothes mentally. That's where you are. Yeah. This is your spirit. And this, in any, with any obstacle, difficulty, you can always practice this. Or imagine, just simply imagine something different. Or reaffirm something else. I'm worth it, for example. I'm worth it. No, I'm worth it. Faced with the danger. <laughs> Excuse me. Faced with the, 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 the negative situation, the, the tension. It may just even be um, naming that affirmation that you've been uh, writing down. You might have some kind of affinity, some resonance. Wow, I didn't feel that. Uh, I felt so good. You know, feel where you are as well with it. Don't just do it mentally. Check it. Okay, how do I feel with this? It's not quite, quite right. Okay, well, then continue. Oh, that's a little bit better. I found a word or I've, I've heard something. I've read a book and I've found this word. It really fits with me. I identify with this word. It resonates with me now. Then maybe in a month from now, you may need other words that can really open windows and open your your, your resources as far as your, um, your spirit is concerned. Does this make sense? Is this, is this something which is do? I try to make this doable as much as possible in a, in a sort of logical, as much as I can, logically formulated way. Do you have any, thank you. Is, do you have any questions? Do you have any questions? You're very welcome. Any thoughts, any negative thoughts or thoughts that say, no, well, yeah, but you, Leonard could do it, but I can't do it. You know, yeah, but, you know those yeah, buts? There's this great film called We Me. We Me, if you're, speak, if you're French speaking, you can get this, I think somewhere, I don't know where now. I got the DVD. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Helen. Um, great. I know some people have to hang up now and they have to start their weekend. And I think you should do that. Um, but the film, we made Gérard Junior, Gérard Junior and a, and a Belgium actress. And they talk about the psychology between these, you know, this girl's parents and how people will say, we oui, may, which means they, they negate the positive thing and they continue with the negative thing and they're happy there because it's familiar it's like our thoughts are family to us and to let go of a thought that is negative wow it's kind of difficult you know why because we love those thoughts we've been exposed to those thoughts we know them we don't like them so much but they're still family and so the difficult thing is to say i love you now i'm changing <laughs> i have to leave you with our thoughts, with those thoughts. Change yourself first. Yeah. Any thoughts, any questions, any comments? Okay, I'm going to read something. How do you make yourself believe when repeating affirmations you don't quite yet believe in, such as I am happy and grateful? Okay, simply repeat them. You repeat thoughts that you perhaps you never wanted to repeat as a child, because they're being just pushed into your mind. Oh, there you go again, Leonard. You're, you're so clumsy. I'm so clumsy. And then you go, oh, yeah, but I'm clumsy. Of course. Then it's the Pygmalion, Pygmalion effect where, you know, the self-fulfilled um, prophecy where, oh, yeah, I bumped into this. Of course, I'm clumsy. We do this anyway. We do it anyway. So if you, if you don't believe in it, 
And it's a positive affirmation that doesn't do anyone any harm, even yourself. Actually, it uplifts you. Do it. Do it. Go against the grain now. If it's positive, do it. Keep on affirming it. Let me look at, I think there's one more question here. Listen, I was thinking actually, um, yeah, thank you so much for, for your presence and for your contribution, for, for listening in, for taking that time out now. Um, and I'm thinking openly like this, you know, I'm, 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 I'm daring to just uh, blurt it out. What about a team building event? You know, R&D would, would create something whereby, you know, they would invite people, of course, and uh, other speakers naturally to, uh, to come in and share their wisdom and to have practical exercises, you know, so that, I mean, I can only do so much on, on the online. And the other things that I have to share, I think, you know, it's great to have face-to-face -face yes, contact. Yes. Yes, yes, I was thinking exactly about that. Okay, then for what me that's kind great. of synchronization? Okay, I was thinking about that, that we should organize the event, get, you know, getting together, gather together. Let's let's I organize. I will see. I will see. Yeah. You know, it doesn't have to be the whole day. Maybe you know, just only no, like just four or five hours. Yeah. But different speakers, different people that are coming in. Yet, you know, we can we can we can reflect on that. Yeah. We have a lot of you know measures and but we will discuss mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. because I, I, I see that it was really appreciated. But if you want, sorry, because I just wanted to tell you that I was just was thinking okay. about Good. it. <laughs> Good. 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 Sorry. Don't forget Luxembourg, yes. Okay, Helen. Luxembourg, uh, yeah, you have to come. Yeah, it's it's interesting. Maybe we can go to Luxembourg, but you know, this is a question of this restrictions, missions. Okay, but we'll if there's a will, we'll there's a way. Reflect. It's all about willingness. Are we willing? Yeah, yeah, yes. We have also go again. against the grain. Are we willing to do something courageous, outrageous, and and go to the end and see if it works? And if you don't, you've had that wealth of experience. You've moved the needle somewhere and then you've set the, you know, first person to run whatever, the four minute mile, you know, all these pioneers in, in, in the people who are first in whatever they do, people didn't believe it was possible before. And then all of a sudden, after the first person does it, everybody can do it. Or most people, all of those people of that ilk can do it because they've seen it. And the idea is to see it in your mind. See it in your imagination. Use that, that higher faculty that we have that we used to use when we were three or two. And we would make sense of the world through it. Yeah. <laughs> Elon Musk, yeah, absolutely. Elon Musk. Yeah. I'm dying to leave Brussels. Yeah. Don't die. <laughs> Do something about it. Do so and, and know the reasons why. Know all the reasons why and what you will have at the end of that, what you want at the end of it. Maybe it's a question of uh, breathing fresh air or seeing more trees or being in, a, in an environment where there are less people. Okay. So you may be, you know, moving to Rot I don't know. It's sort of like, um... okay. Any questions now? We take two minutes for questions, if, if I may. And I have to get back to um, also my weekend and recovery. Any questions? Any thoughts? then I will say thank you so much for your for hanging in there, for being present, for contributing, and for being the sharing this, uh, allowing me to share what I know with you. And uh, as I said before, in the beginning, I could be sitting there and you could be here where I am. It's not there's, there's no difference. There's no special whatever it is. It's just wanting to share and wanting to see what happens and see how it can influence people. And then of course, um, me progressing as well. It's also something egocentric for me as well. You know, I can progress, I can see what works, I can refine it and I can give more afterwards. So a big thanks to you and I uh, wish you all the best and perhaps see you very soon. Yes. <laughs>